You are armed and dangerous when you know who you are in Christ. When you use the word, when you use the name, when you apply the blood, you are armed and dangerous. Now, you may not see anything happening, but let me tell you something. In the spirit realm, demons are fleeing. We are in a war, but we should not ever be so foolish as to think that God did not leave us equipped. You never have to be afraid of the devil. You never have to be afraid of anything that he tries to do to you because really and truly we are more than conquerors. Right in the midst of whatever you're going on, going through right now, you don't have to feel like you're, you're the tail end of anything because the Bible says you're the head and not the tail. Above and not beneath. You say, well, it sure doesn't feel like it. Well, we can't go by how we feel. We have to stand firm on the Word of God and say, the Bible says that even in the midst of my battles that I am more than a conqueror through him who loves me. In the midst of your battles, do not ever forget that God loves you deeply, tremendously, and that he has a very good plan for your life. Now, there's some people in here tonight you need to take this and you need to swallow it down. Don't just let it fly over your head. You've got some issues going on, you've been hurt, you've got some problems, you're facing some things, and you kind of got, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, you know, maybe you came here tonight hoping that I could cheer you up, and I believe that I can, but I believe that I can do more than that. I believe that I can equip you and get you to the point through the Word of God that you won't always need to be the one who needs to be cheered up, but you can be the one who's cheering somebody else up. The only reason we get so down when we have problems is because we're concerned that we're never going to get rid of them. We're concerned that we're not going to get what we want in life or that we're going to have to wait a lot longer than we feel like we can wait. We think what somebody did to us is unfair and it may be, but we must also remember that God is a God of justice and he will not put up with people hurting his kids if they stand steadfast on his word. If somebody hurts me and I have a bitter attitude and refuse to forgive them, that I cannot expect God to deliver me. I, can, I will not see God's justice in my life if I have that wrong attitude. But if I will, by his grace, do the part that he has asked me to do, God will always bring justice in my life and he will always bring justice in your life. Listen to me, if somebody has hurt you, God is a God of justice and he will give you double for your trouble if you will stand on the word of God. Do you understand me? You gotta get that. You're more than a conqueror right now. You may feel like you're under everything, but the Bible says right in the midst of all of these things, not when they're over, but in the midst of all of these things, and that's the best time to open your mouth and say, I am more than a conqueror through Christ who loves me. Did you hear that, devil? I am more than a conqueror through Christ who loves me. The head and not the tail, above and not beneath, I shall lend to many nations and never have to borrow. A Christian is told to be on guard, to live on guard. Luke 12, 15 says, guard yourself against greed and covetousness. You have to be very careful when God begins to bless you materially and financially that you don't just get a greedy spirit and want more and more and more and more and more. That's why you always want to make sure the more you have, the more you give. Amen? The more you have, the more you give. The better your life is, the better you treat other people. Whenever God blesses you, you always share some of it with somebody else. And maybe that's one of the secrets of giving. Maybe God tells us to always give off the top of what he gives us. To always give first because it's one of the ways that we battle greed and covetousness. Which is a terrible thing to have. Because when you're greedy and covetous, you can't even be thankful for what you have. You just want more. 
Matthew 16, 6, be on guard against the leaven of the Pharisees. That leaven that he was talking about was getting back under legalism rather than living in the, the true liberty that Christ died for us to have. Jesus didn't die so you could live under rules and regulations and laws that people make for you. He wants us to be free to be led by the Holy Spirit that lives on the inside of us who will always lead us into holy living. Matthew 10, 17, be on guard against those who act in opposition to God. Be careful who you become closely associated with. Mark 13, 23, be on guard and look to yourselves. You need to know yourself. Know your weaknesses. Know your strengths. Luke 17, 3, be on guard looking out for one another. When you see somebody starting to compromise in an area, pray for them. When you see that somebody is having a difficult time, pray for them. One of the best ways that we can help each other is to pray right away when we see that they have a need. You don't always need to give everybody a sermon. You certainly don't need to go tell somebody else, oh, I noticed so-and-so was really having a hard time today. No, if God allows you to notice that so-and-so is having a hard time, then you need to pray right away. God, I ask you in Jesus' name to strengthen them. I don't know what they're going through, but I feel like they're having a rough time. And so I'm covering them, asking you to help them in everything that they're up against. Now you've done some service for God. But what we do so often is just talk about things instead of praying about things. We need to be on guard. We need to pay attention to the thoughts that are coming into our mind. We need to pay attention to the feelings that we have. Well, where'd that come from? What, what's that all about? Stop and say, God, what's the source of this? What's the root of this problem? One night I couldn't sleep, couldn't sleep, couldn't sleep. Four or five o'clock in the morning I couldn't sleep. And usually I sleep real good. So finally, wish I would have done it sooner, but finally I said, God, what is the problem? Because I just kind of felt like the Holy Ghost just wasn't leaving me alone. And immediately God showed me somebody that I had been rude to the day before. And I had to apologize to God. And then when it was time to do it the next day, go and apologize to them. But there was a reason why I wasn't sleeping good. So instead of just saying, I don't know why I'm not sleeping good. I wonder why I'm not sleeping good. Ask God. Maybe he'll say, you drink too much coffee too late at night. Whatever. You know, Dave was having a real hard time one time sleeping. And when he went to God, went to God, God told him, you're drinking too much Dr. Pepper. Not against Dr. Pepper, but he was going to the drive-in and getting this great big 32-ounce thing every day and sucking it down that was keeping him from sleeping. Ask God what's wrong with you. <laughs> Come on. Some of you don't even want to know, do you? <laughs> and I would ask him nothing. He might tell me. I'm preaching better than you guys are acting. I'm going to have to perk you up. See, that's being responsible, not just to live, well, you know, I don't know why I feel this way. You know, I don't, you know, my mind is under attack. Well, then open your mouth and say, devil, I rebuke you. Get away from me. Go get your Bible. Open it up and read it out loud till you have peace in your mind again. Because it'll work if you'll do it. I got some, got my feelings hurt one time and I was mad. I was mad at Dave. <laughs> and you know, when you're mad at somebody, you don't want to go in the room where they're at. You just, when they come in the room where you're at, everything just gets in a knot and you're like, you won't talk to them, won't say nothing, not about to do for them what you would normally do. If you would normally go get yourself something to drink, you'd bring them something, but not now. Uh, nope. Doing nothing for you? Well, see, I've learned after 30 some odd years in the Word that that just doesn't work in kingdom economy. 
that all I'm doing is opening a door for the devil. The Bible says, don't let the sun go down on your anger. Do not give him any such opportunity. Don't let him have a foothold. But I feel so angry and I feel so hurt. We start playing the blame game. You don't ever have to worry about what anybody else is doing or not doing. The only part we are responsible for is our part. You didn't hear me. Let's think about that again. Let's tell that to everybody watching by TV. You never have to worry about what somebody else is doing or not doing. You're only responsible for your part. You do your part and God will always take care of you. If you do your part, God will always take care of you. Well, sure, the enemy wanted me to stay mad all night and lose my peace and lose my joy. But I took my Bible. I went in my little room that was my office at the time. I got down in the floor. I got on my face. I stuck that Bible in my nose. And I said, God, I just want you to know that I am not getting up from here nor leaving this room until you give me the grace to go out that door and act like a woman of God and talk to my husband. Amen. And we went at it. Started praying, started reading. My gosh, the stuff I do for you guys. Just say, I wish I didn't feel this way, but God just helped me not to feel this way. No, I want you to get some fire in your belly this weekend. God brought you here so I could fan the flame. Fan those embers that may be about to die or go out. It's so hard. Please stop saying that. <laughs> First Thessalonians 5, 6. Accordingly then, let us not sleep as the rest do. And this is not talking about going to bed at night. But let us keep wide awake, alert, watchful, cautious, and on our guard. And let us be sober, calm, collected, and circumspect. That doesn't sound like somebody that's just kind of, whatever. This is a person who is intentional, living on purpose. They have set their mind for victory, and they are not going to have anything else. Amen? Paul said, my determined purpose is to know him. I wish I knew God like you do. No, you got to be determined. You got to be determined enough to go to bed at night, to get up in the morning, to go spend that time with God, and to get to know Him. Does anybody feel a glow coming down in your belly at least? The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 2.15 that the spiritual man tries all things. He investigates, questions, looks into, and examines all things. If we want to live in victory, we got to stop being sleepy. Amen? Pay attention to the little promptings of the Holy Spirit. Pay attention to the discernment that you have in you. I've been going through some stuff in Proverbs again, and over and over and over it talks about wisdom and prudence and discernment and discretion. Those are four of the most wonderful words, and I would venture to say that a lot of people don't even know what they mean. It's the ability to choose between right and wrong. Discernment is something that you can get down in your spirit that will keep you safe if you'll listen to it. One morning last week, I was up in my office, and I had on a long nightgown. I wasn't dressed yet for the day, so there's a little you know, picture for you, Joyce in her nightgown. And uh, 
I had some Bibles. I was, was going to do some TV that day, and so I had a couple of Bibles I had to take to the office, and I had my empty coffee cup. I was carrying my empty little coffee mug, and so just as I got to the steps, I had this little knowing thought. I should probably get a hold of that nightgown and hold it up a little bit just so I don't get my feet tangled up in it and trip. But I thought, eh. <laughs> Sound like anybody you know? <laughs> eh. So I started on down the steps and I almost fell. Well, right away I told the Lord I was sorry. Now here's the thing. God's grace saved me that time. He's merciful and gracious. But you know what? And this is just my thought. You can think what you want. I won't ever go down those steps again and not pick that nightgown up if I got it on. And I'll tell you why. Because I believe now that I know and I saw the mercy of God, if I continued to do something dumb, then it wouldn't, you know, and if I fell, then it wouldn't be that God said, well, you didn't listen to me, so I'm going to kick you down the steps. That's not the way God is. But when we don't listen to God and we know that we're not listening to God, it's one thing if you don't know, but when you know, it's another story. If you don't listen to God, then what we do is we bring ourselves out here, out from under his protection where we're open play to the enemy. We're always saying, well, I know I shouldn't, but, well, I know I should, but, <laughs> well, I know I should go to bed, but, well, then tomorrow when you're tired, it's not God's fault. It's not the devil's fault. It's your own fault. And you know, I'm just, I'm not just trying to act like everybody's mother. I don't know, maybe I am, but I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to show you that some of these simple little practical things that you know you should or shouldn't do, they can make a major difference in your life. A major difference in your life. Spiritual warfare does not have to be difficult. Defeating the devil does not have to be difficult. God has given us weapons he has given us offensive weapons, weapons that we can go after the enemy with. We don't have to wait for him to come at us and just defend ourselves. We can go at him. And there are three things, three simple foundational things that every believer should learn before he ever learns much else other than God loves me. And they are the power that's in the Word of God the power that's in the name of Jesus and the power that's in the blood of Jesus Christ. These weapons are offensive. We can use them to aggressively go after the devil. Get thee behind me, Satan. In Jesus' name, get thee behind me. <laughs> when the devil is attacking us, are merely to keep him in his place, which is under our feet. The Word of God. I have been realizing even more and more lately how powerful the Word of God is. I mean, it is powerful. We can sing the Word, pray the Word, speak the Word, learn the Word, the Word of God is an amazing thing. And I've set myself to teach people, and I'm going to try to do this some way in each of my conferences, certainly, and hopefully some way in every session, that when somebody is preaching the Word of God to you, like I am this weekend, there is an anointing that is on that Word. Jesus is the Word. Amen? And so when somebody is sharing the Word of God with you, they're not just sharing ordinary words. When you hear the Word of God, when you turn your television on and you receive the Word of God, it's not just ordinary words. Those words are full of power. 
They're full of power. We take vitamins because they got something in them that we think will help us. Well, the Word of God should be taken. It, it, you, you don't, don't, let some, don't just sit like, well, I just came to hear what Joyce has to say this weekend. Go to try, well, I wonder what the preacher will say this weekend. Turn to the first scripture. Maybe you got that one underlined so you kind of zone out. Oh, I know that one. <laughs> I mean, we need to be attentive. We need to listen. You need to take some notes maybe. Or if you hear something that really, yeah, I need this. Get a copy of it. Listen to it over and over. But I want to tell you something. I don't care what I preach on. I believe that if you release your faith, you can receive healing in an area of your life while you're sitting there receiving the Word. When you're sitting under anointed praise and worship that's full of the Word, you can receive healing. You can receive physical healing. You can be healed from sickness and disease. Psalm 107, 20, He sends His Word and heals them and heals them. Your broken heart can be healed during praise and worship. Your wounded soul can be healed while I'm preaching the Word. Your mind can be healed. Your emotions can be healed. But it's not going to happen if you just sit there passively. You say, well, what am I supposed to do? Release your faith. Be alert. Be alive. God, I'm going to go in there and I'm going to receive. I want your word to change me. I want it to renew my mind. And I'm releasing my faith right now that you are going to heal this sickness in my body. That I am not going to stay wounded and broken. And here's just what I want to say. I believe that we can all sometimes just be too casual about the whole thing. Come sauntering in, halfway into worship, disturb 50 people trying to get in your seat. <laughs> we need to have a respectful attitude to the Word of God. And if we will value the Word more, we will see the Word working in our lives in a greater way. Amen? Every time the devil said to Jesus, and Jesus said to the devil, it is written, quoted him a scripture, learn how to talk out loud to the devil. God has exalted his word and his name above all else, and he has exalted his word even above his name, Psalm 138, 2. With God's word coming out of your mouth, you are armed and dangerous. The name of Jesus. My, 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 my. Philippians 2.10. And there was given unto him a name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee must bow in heaven, on earth, and under the earth. Amen. I challenge you about 10 times a day to just open your mouth and say, Jesus. There's power in that name. I honestly believe that if we would do these things more, we would see more breakthrough in our life. Jesus. Maybe just start when you get up in the morning. First word out of your mouth, Jesus. And then just wait just a minute. It's almost like you can just feel anointing fall all over you. You know, we learn by the Word of God that the name that He was given that has now been given unto us, that same name, power of attorney transferred to us, you can use the name. <laughs> that name represents all that He is. Well, I hope and pray that you are determined to live with purpose, to know who you are and who you belong to. I want to encourage you to be on your guard. 
because we are at war. However, we have everything that we need. We have all the spiritual equipment we need to win that war. The Iraqi Christians are persecuted intentionally in Iraq. So all the families are leaving. The majority has come to Lebanon because they feel safe, because there's a big Christian community. When we looked around and uh, uh, of the Iraqis, we felt the Lord is leading us to target this group of people with the love and compassion we can provide. Uh, this room is where we uh, pack the food and store it and we get it ready for the food distribution that we do every month. Um, and 500 Iraqi families benefit from that food distribution. So uh, we have big bags, parcel bags, full of basic food items. If it was rice, sugar, milk, tea, uh, canned meat, cheese, and many other items, as well as shampoo, detergents, uh, tissue paper, toilet paper, diapers, because of Hand of Hope and Joyce Meyer's uh, Compassion Ministry, the Iraqi refugees are being blessed. And they are very grateful for that, and we are grateful for that as well. Iedere dag worden we door vele stemmen, gedachten en meningen overspoeld. Hoe kunnen we erachter komen wat God ons door bepaalde levensvragen en dagelijkse uitdagingen zeggen wil? Joyce Meyer legt in dit boek uit op welke verschillende manieren God met je kan communiceren. Bestel nu hoe je Gods stem kunt horen telefonisch op 026 20 22 100 of bezoek onze website joyce-meyer.nl alle boeken van Joyce Meyer staan overzichtelijk op een rijtje in een brochure. Geef nieuwe impulsen aan je dagelijks leven en bestel deze gratis brochure nu telefonisch op nummer 026 20 22 100.